Scientists working at the Large Hadron Collider operated by CERN have made public the anticipated scheduling of the initial interactions between proton beams on April 8, following the completion of all machine assessments and adjustments. Subsequently, the substantial experiments carried out by CERN, which entail the collision of proton particles, will be able to recommence their scientific activities for data collection and analysis. Many individuals within the realm of social media have brought attention to the forthcoming total solar eclipse scheduled to occur on Monday, April 8, 2024. This celestial event is projected to traverse North America, making its passage over countries such as Mexico, the United States, and Canada. The initial phase of the total solar eclipse is set to commence above the South Pacific Ocean. In the event of favorable weather conditions, the point of first contact with totality on the North American continent is predicted to be along Mexico's Pacific coastline, occurring at approximately 11 in the morning. Numerous individuals have commented concerns regarding the potential negative outcomes, suggesting that scientists may be overstepping their bounds by engaging in these experimental pursuits, likening it to playing the role of a deity. In the sphere of speculative science fiction and theoretical physics, the intriguing concept of accessing a portal using the Large Hadron Collider has sparked the interest of numerous enthusiasts. Various hypotheses suggest that the immense energies released during particle collisions within the Large Hadron Collider might potentially lead to the formation of subatomic black holes or wormholes, which are transient phenomena with the potential to act as gateways to alternate dimensions or parallel universes. This idea has captivated the minds of scientists and science fiction aficionados alike, prompting deeper explorations into the realms of possibility and the underlying fabric of the universe, with its infinite mysteries waiting to be unraveled. In a theoretical situation, if particles collide within the Large Hadron Collider, it has the potential to create a microscopic black hole, a space in the fabric of the universe where gravitational pull is immensely intense, preventing any form of light from escaping. These transient black holes, although harmless, present an opportunity to gain crucial insights into the workings of gravity and the foundational forces governing our cosmos. The possibility of generating these tiny black holes in such high-energy collisions opens a window to explore the nature of gravity and its interactions with other fundamental aspects of the universe in a controlled setting. In a different hypothetical situation, the Large Hadron Collider has the potential to unintentionally generate a wormhole, an imagined passage through the fabric of space-time linking far-flung areas of the universe. Wormholes are currently only conjectural constructs, yet their theoretical ability to expedite travel beyond the speed of light or open up avenues for communication over vast cosmic expanses renders them a captivating topic for scientific investigation. The concept of a wormhole, if brought into existence by the Collider, could revolutionize our understanding of the universe and the laws of physics. Delving into the idea of initiating a portal through the Large Hadron Collider presents a fascinating prospect that captivates curiosity. However, it triggers substantial ethical dilemmas and considerations of utmost importance. Central to these deliberations is the apprehension surrounding unforeseen repercussions, notably the emergence of perilous occurrences like miniature black holes or erratic wormholes as plausible outcomes. In addition, the activation of a portal holds immense significance for mankind, promising to not only reshape our perception of the universe, but also potentially reconfigure the very essence of existence. Scientists at the Large Hadron Collider are tasked with the responsibility of overseeing scientific advancements and innovations, requiring a meticulous evaluation of the risks and benefits associated with their experiments. They must navigate the delicate balance between progress and caution, recognizing the profound implications that their actions may have on the future trajectory of scientific exploration and on the broader scope of human experience. The Large Hadron Collider is approaching its final year in its current configuration as it gears up for a restart in April. Detailed preparations for this milestone have been meticulously underway since earlier this spring, progressing through a series of meticulous steps and thorough testing procedures. According to an interim report featured on the CERN website, Render Stierenberg, the head of CERN's accelerator section, highlighted that these preparations are not only on track, but are also proceeding ahead of the planned schedule. At the conclusion of the current measurement season, which is expected to wrap up in either November or December, 
the forthcoming third long shutdown, known as LS3, is slated to commence. This extended hiatus, spanning several years, is earmarked for the construction of the next-generation particle accelerator, the High-Luminosity Large Hadron Collider, designed to generate proton beams ten times more potent than its predecessor. Over the recent years, CERN has already established a range of cutting-edge facilities dedicated to the project, setting the stage for groundbreaking advancements in particle physics research. The significant experiments conducted at CERN with the participation of NICEF have revealed that the beams are currently observed traversing through their detection systems. This groundbreaking development showcases the successful integration and operation of the detectors within these experiments. In particular, great emphasis was placed on the urgency at the experiment to ensure readiness for the impending return of the beam. The recent installation of a revamped central VELO detector, carried out by a collaborative team involving NICEF and various other contributors, marked a pivotal milestone. The replacement became necessary as the prior VELO unit positioned in close proximity to the beam, suffered operational setbacks attributed to an unexpected pressure-related incident. This development underscored the intricate coordination and swift action required in the dynamic environment of the experiment, showcasing the collective efforts to address challenges promptly and uphold the integrity of the research infrastructure. According to a report in Nature in 2015, the Large Hadron Collider, which is the biggest and most potent particle accelerator worldwide, is set to be reactivated in the upcoming days. Despite the global anticipation surrounding this event, there are two individuals who have chosen to keep quiet. Walter Wagner, a former nuclear safety official, and Luis Sancho, a journalist from Spain. They have involvement with the Large Hadron Collider and have decided to come forward with an interesting revelation. Months prior to the planned initiation of the Particle Collider in 2008, Wagner and Sancho took legal action against the entities responsible for this colossal device. The plaintiffs were the US Department of Energy, Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, National Science Foundation, and the European Organization for Nuclear Research. It requires immense courage and, perhaps, a touch of irrationality to attempt legal action against any of these institutions filled with some of the most brilliant minds in the world. This is even more challenging when it happens right before the completion of a $6 billion, three-decade-long project. In the defense of Wagner and Sancho, they believed they were trying to prevent what seemed like an inevitable and devastating catastrophe. The Large Hadron Collider's potential to generate a miniature black hole that could engulf the Earth was one of their primary concerns. They expressed this worry in their legal action. They said that in due course, the entire Earth would be drawn towards an expanding micro-black hole, resulting in the transformation of our planet into a medium-sized black hole. Consequently, the Moon, satellites, the International Space Station, and other celestial objects would continue to revolve around it. The lawsuit was eventually rejected due to the men's inability to provide evidence of a believable intention to cause harm. Although their concerns were unfounded, Considering that the Earth has continued to exist, despite the Large Hadron Collider operating for several consecutive years, it is essential to comprehend the safety aspects associated with utilizing the Large Hadron Collider for scientific purposes. Wagner and Sakos presented a lawsuit with three concerns. However, it is important to understand why none of these concerns should be a cause for worry. Black holes, which are immensely dense objects, have a mass range that can be as small as 4 to 200 million times the mass of our Sun. Although black holes are typically very large, it is theoretically possible for a small amount of matter, on the scale of tens of micrograms, to be compressed tightly enough to create a black hole. Such a black hole would be considered microscopic in size. Up until now, there have been no instances of the creation or observation of a minuscule black hole, including at the Large Hadron Collider. However, Prior to its initial operation in 2008, Wagner and Sancho expressed concerns that the high-speed acceleration and collision of subatomic particles could potentially result in the formation of an extremely dense particle amalgamation capable of giving birth to a black hole. According to the renowned astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, there is an alternative theory that suggests that even if a tiny black hole were to be created within the Large Hadron Collider, 
It would rapidly break apart and would not pose any danger to the survival of our planet. Black holes, as understood in general relativity, are formed when massive stars collapse under their own gravity, leading to a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Considering this, the likelihood of creating a black hole under the conditions found in the Large Hadron Collider seems unlikely, as the energies and densities achieved there are far lower than those in stellar processes. However, the black holes in question regarding the Large Hadron Collider are not those of classical general relativity, but rather speculative objects predicted in some theories of quantum gravity, such as string theory. These theories propose additional spatial dimensions beyond the familiar three, and it is in these extra dimensions that microscopic black holes could theoretically form at the Large Hadron Collider. In these theories, gravity becomes much stronger at small distances than currently observed, allowing for the creation of micro-black holes when particles collide at sufficiently high energies. The energies achievable at the collider, while impressive by human-made standards, are still far below the levels typically associated with black hole production. Yet, if additional dimensions significantly alter gravity's behavior at small scales, black holes could potentially form at the Large Hadron Collider. Despite the theoretical possibility, there is no empirical evidence that such processes occur in nature, despite particles interacting at energies far higher than those achievable by the collider in cosmic ray collisions in Earth's atmosphere. Moreover, if these hypothetical black holes were created, they would be expected to decay almost instantaneously through a process known as Hawking radiation, posing no threat. Additionally, thorough safety reviews conducted by CERN and the wider scientific community have concluded that the Large Hadron Collider is safe. They argue that if such microscopic black holes could be created in particle collisions, they would also be produced by cosmic rays and would have already caused noticeable effects, which we do not observe. The cosmos, with its infinite expanse and myriad celestial bodies, often astounds us with its proclivity for spectacular events. However, certain scenarios elicit more apprehension than wonder, one of which is the hypothetical situation of a black hole approaching the Milky Way. Black holes are objects of extreme density, with gravitational fields so powerful that nothing, including light, can escape. The consequences of a black hole's approach towards our galaxy would largely depend on its mass and trajectory. If it were a small black hole, like those formed by stellar collapse, it would likely go unnoticed unless it passed extremely close to our solar system, disrupting the orbits of planets and possibly leading to mass extinction on Earth. However, if a supermassive black hole, millions or billions of times the mass of our Sun, were to approach the Milky Way, the implications would be far-reaching and devastating. Our galaxy, like most, has its own supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, at its center. The dynamics between these two immense objects would become crucial. An incoming black hole would start disrupting the outer regions of the Milky Way, causing gravitational perturbations that might send some stars hurtling into intergalactic space while pulling others into erratic, high-speed orbits. This disturbance would ripple inwards, significantly perturbing the galactic disk and potentially triggering a burst of star formation due to the compression of gas and dust. If the incoming black hole were to reach the central regions of our galaxy, it would engage in a gravitational dance with Sagittarius A. This binary system of two massive black holes orbiting each other would cause further chaos, flinging stars out of the galaxy or into the black holes. Eventually, gravitational radiation would cause the two black holes to merge in a violent event, sending ripples through space-time known as gravitational waves. Post-merger, the newly formed supermassive black hole would likely settle at the center of the galaxy. Depending on the energy and momentum carried away by the gravitational waves, the galaxy could either be left with a significantly disturbed but still recognizable structure or be torn apart entirely, its stars scattered across the universe. The effects on Earth would depend on our planet's distance from these cataclysmic events. At our current location, about 26,000 light-years from the galactic center, we would likely be safe from immediate harm, but might witness a spectacular display in the sky as the galaxy's structure is dramatically altered. However, it is important to note that such an event is highly unlikely given our current understanding of the universe. 
black holes, while abundant, are spread out over vast distances. Furthermore, their movements are largely governed by the distribution of mass in the universe, making a direct collision course with our galaxy incredibly improbable. So, what do you make of these interesting announcements? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.